Hey everybody, this is Jimmy Lemke from PantherU.com. I just wanted to talk about um, the Nebraska coaching search. Obviously, Coach Jeter's name has been bandied about as one of the candidates. He's even got an endorsement from his mentor, Bro, Bo Ryan, at Wisconsin to uh, receive the job. Um, as you know, Milwaukee's coach is Jeter, and that would change if Nebraska hires him away. Uh, first, I'll tell you what I know from poking around, talking around. Um, I know that Jeter is um, has been contacted by Nebraska, but that's about as far as it goes. Uh, he hasn't returned anything so far. It's just rumors about him going to Nebraska. Um, it's just just a preliminary feeler sent out and what I from what I gather Nebraska had sent out feelers to several coaches um, a couple of those coaches may be coaches that are still playing um, the other three coaches that I keep hearing coming up uh, as far as calling people that I know uh, out in Nebraska that are connected to Nebraska's program that are they're hearing things um, I'm hearing three names. I'm hearing Miles, the head coach of Colorado State. I'm hearing Gross, the head coach of Ohio. And I'm hearing Brian Gregory, the head coach at Georgia Tech, who just spent almost the last decade at Dayton. Um, Gregory obviously had a tumultuous first season at Georgia Tech. Um, there's the voicemail that is out on Deadspin right now that is talking, that has somebody from Nebraska's athletic department leaving a voicemail message for a BG that was accidentally left on somebody's phone. Um, the, the guy who accidentally took the phone call is a fan who sent it in to Deadspin. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, they don't put the area code, so you can, you can guess it's probably Brian Gregory, but, um... It could be somebody else. Um, the other, uh, Miles is who I'm hearing uh, more often than not, and Gross from Ohio. I think as long as Ohio keeps winning in the NCAA tournament, his chances of landing a bigger job are better and better. Um, if they end up going to a Final Four, Gross might be the guy for the Illinois job, not the Nebraska job. I just know that um, as long as Ohio is in the tournament, it looks like Nebraska isn't going to get serious with anybody because um, knowing past coaching searches, these things tend to move kind of quickly. And we've already reached several days since the Jeter has been contacted story has come out. So we don't really know exactly what's going on with that. Um, beyond that, um, Jeter's chances are fairly fairly decent. He doesn't have the t the recent tournaments that Gregory or Gregory or Miles or Gross have. However, he did win the conference championship last year, uh, which shows that he has finally built his own program. Uh, he's had a little bit of a little bit of bad luck in the conference tournament, but. Uh, he still has a pretty good record in the conference tournament, and um, you can see that having the endorsement of Bo Ryan is a really big deal for his candidacy. If if he chooses that he wants to go, uh, he may decide not to. Of course, Nebraska isn't the Nebraska job anymore. Um, Nebraska was a bottom feeder in the Big 12 forever, and it was a bottom feeder in the Big 10 in its first season there, but the fact that they moved to the Big Ten is a big, big, big difference for the university. Um, the Big Ten television money is spread out equally, and the Big Ten gets a lot of good money for its teams. In fact, Nebraska made a profit of $30 million this year, and that's quite a big chunk of change. So you can expect that a bunch of that's going into the basketball program. Probably not. Most of it, obviously. It's, a lot of it's going to go back into the football program, but they look to be committed to men's basketball. Um, they have renovated their arena, or excuse me, they're not renovating, they're rebuilding a new arena that will be that will be opening in about 18 months um, for the 2014-15 season. Well, 18 months. <laughs> um, and they have the 
or excuse me, the 2013-14 season. And then they also have just finished a $19 million practice facility that houses men's basketball, women's basketball, and wrestling. So between those two things and the fact that Doc Sadler was making 900000 so you can expect the new coach to make more than that, um, it looks like they're going to be going for somebody, somebody big. Um, beyond that, um, <laughs> beyond that, uh, the, the money for us, if, if, if Jeter were to leave, um, I'm confused by people who say that we just don't have the money. Uh, currently Jeter makes about $411,000 and he'll make, uh, he makes about 450 once his shoe contract and, and, uh, broadcast contract are out there for the radio show and the TV show. So it makes about $450,000 and I just don't understand how we wouldn't be able to afford that moving forward, considering that's what's on the books right now. Um, I've, I've put this out there, but people don't, people still pretty much are ignoring it. I don't know why. Um, beginning next year, segregated fees for students, which go directly into the athletics coffers, uh, they amount to about $3 million right now, $77.75 per full-time student per semester. Um, it's, it's over $3 million right now. And next year, that's jumping up to $106.55. The year after that is 110 And then by the 2014-15 school year, it'll be $119 per semester per full-time student. Um, that's not something that's, um, that's not just a, uh, one shot deal that is going to stick around after 2014, 15, $119 is the benchmark. Um, they're not going to get cut. Um, it looks like they might end up making, uh, they, they might end up increasing that segregated fee beyond them. But what that turns out to be is, um, just next year, it'll be about $1.3 million more than they currently have. And the final year of that, when it jumps up to $119, that's $2 million more that year than they made this year from segregated fees from students. So you can expect that some of that money is going to go into the men's basketball program. Um, obviously, other things need to be taken care of. The support staff needs a uh, big improvement. And by that, I mean they need help. Um, having one person in development and one person in corporate sales and one person in marketing and one person in compliance and one person in the business, it, does, it just doesn't work. Uh, if you look around athletics departments in the country, I mean, uh, I believe Madison ha or no, Ohio State has nine people in their development office alone. So you can expect that those people are raising good money. And... I have uh, only met Claire Thompson in passing. I'm sure that she does. She will do a wonderful job, but I'm. I, I hope that some of that money goes towards getting her some help, um, so we can maximize everything that Claire Thompson does. And I hope that they can get Lavar Ridgeway some help. And uh, they've already gotten John Stewart some help as far as in co corporate sales, as far as this uh, Matt Millet cat they just hired last September, I believe. So they're they're making hires, and you can expect that student segregated fee money to go to that. But also in the men's basketball office, our assistants are paid at close to the low level, the low end of the league, and you need to get assistants paid better because, um, because then you're not losing those assistants to other assistant mid major jobs. Um, the bid situation was different than that, but. You know, it could come up. I mean, what if we would were to lose a Chad Boudreau or a Duffy Conroy to a, another school? I mean, even a Horizon League school where they make m more money. Um, Tracy Dildy made at UIC made double what any of our assistants made. So you can see that we really need that to to jump up. So. That 1.3 million next year will be 2 million extra by 2014-15, so you can expect that they will be able to hire a coach that is worth it. But as of right now, Rob G is the coach. He looks to be the coach next year, unless this Nebraska stuff or another school goes. So 
we'll see how it lands.